Aren't you still, Mark? Oh, that's all right, Judd. I know it's like the first time I tried to put a live lobster in a shopping cart. <laughs> you shouldn't have bagged our own groceries. Ooh, dead bread. <laughs> well, at least now we can have pumpernickel tortillas. <sighs> Looks like you don't have to worry about scrambling your eggs either. <laughs> oh. It's not a pretty sight, is it? Well, at least they die with their shells on. May you rest in pieces. I've never seen anyone get so emotional over eggs. Oh, each one of those eggs represents 76 chicken hours, John. You know, Mark, ever since I moved into this neighborhood, you've been one of my best friends. Thanks for taking me to the movies today. How'd you like it? Well, for such a conceptual interesting film, I usually like to see it twice. You know, I found the production values reminiscent of Bergman and the dramatic values reminiscent of Fellini. But what bothers me is, why did the coyote, after the roadrunner blew him up, come back five seconds later? How should I know? I don't even understand what you said. Uh, what do you want me to do with the mail? Oh, put it on the counter. It's Mindy's. Uh, this one's for you. Oh, mail for moi? It's from the U.S. Dep. Of Imig and Nat? I don't know anyone named Nat. Let me see. Sorry. Oh, no. From the Department of Immigration and Naturalization. Dear sir. That's nice. Pursuant to your visit of April 19th last year, we require more information on your alien status. Please contact our office immediately to prevent termination of your U.S. residency. Love, Jimmy. Well, it means I'm up the creek without a green card. Being, <laughs> being grown up is sure confusing. Oh, I'm sorry, little one. See, last year I went to apply for an alien status, and they, well, they, they refused me, and I thought they threw away the form, but I guess they didn't. What's that got to do with the creek? Well, it means I'm going to be deported. Mark, what's deported mean? Well, it means I'll have to find another place to live. I better go down there and check it out right away. Careful what you say. Oh, you're right, it's the government. <laughs> Try and duck any questions. I think I'm chicken and my goose is cooked. Well, well I guess I have to prove them. I'm going to be a fine American citizen. What's it say in the Statue of Liberty, Judd? I was there once when I was a kid. It says, Carlos loves Mary Beth Ovitz. Oh, it's almost four o'clock. I better put in some decent duds and get down to the federal courthouse. I'll stay here and tell Minnie where you've gone. You know, Carlos must really love Mary Beth. I mean, he built that big statue and she's still carrying a torch for him. America, America, from sea to shining waves of grain. Yes. You, uh, you must be my five o'clock appointment. I'm certainly not your five o'clock shadow. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm just a typical American patriotic citizen. I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to stop by Mom's Diner to have a piece of apple pie, <laughs> a cold beer, eat a hot dog, watch a baseball game, catch a pass, join the army, move to the suburbs, and shoot a deer. <laughs> well, what's this in my pocket? I don't know. It's the Constitution. I don't know why I carried it around, because I memorized it years ago. <laughs> Mr. Mark, is it? Yes, uh, yes, my fellow American, it is. It says here you come from Ork. Where exactly is that? Follow, 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 follow. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mark, it's pretty hard for an alien to get into this country, but it's impossible for a wacky alien to get in. Ah, oh, what about Charo? <laughs> Have, uh, have you got any identification papers? Oh, no, just Mr. Bill of Rights. Oh, no, don't violate me! <laughs> your enthusiasm is very admirable. Thank you. And your costume is pretty spiffy. <laughs> but we don't grant citizenship on personality alone. You can ask me anything about American history. I know all the answers. For example, who is Paul Revere's barber? From Mr. Benedict of Boston. I, I know the names of all the states. There's anxiety, depression, fear, catatonic joy, catatonic love. 
Judd told me you were here. Oh, I am. Yeah. Um, excuse me for barging in like this, Your Honor. Are you with him or are you normal? No, no, I'm with him. Well, then you can help answer a few questions. Well, I thought we cleared all these questions up last year. Well, all I can tell you is this file is incomplete. If he wants to stay in the country, you have to have some more information. Well, uh, my astrological sign is nefarious with egg rising. Well, we'll start with occupation. You got a job? Absolutely. What is it? Well, observing a primitive planet. <gasps> observing a reasonable planet. Observing a wonderful planet. <laughs> is there a lot of money in that? Well, uh, not much. Huh? I usually make my money from doing odd jobs. I'll bet. <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor, uh, couldn't you just tell Mork what he has to do to stay in the country? Well, for starters, he has to bring me a passport and a birth certificate. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hold this file for five days. But if he doesn't produce the documents by then, he'll have to be deported. Oh, I wonder why I left my birth certificate. Probably with my passport, huh, man? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you two will excuse me, I have to take... Two adult strength pain relievers. Did you want to sing God Bless America in three-part harmony with subtitles? If you don't bring me those papers, you may be singing God Bless Guatemala. <laughs> um, excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, just in the off chance Mort can't find his passport or his birth certificate, uh, is there any other way he can stay in the country? Not unless he marries an American citizen. changed yet? No, I'm still an illegal alien. <laughs> well, I've been thinking over the alternatives. Yeah, me too. Number one, I could run away, then they'd arrest me, there'd be a brief trial, then death row, then a long walk, then President Jerry Brown would strap me into a solar-powered electric chair and take me a year to die. <laughs> well, I've been thinking. You could run away, but then you'd be a fugitive. Yeah, I'll probably be pursued for the rest of my life by a one-armed immigration officer. <laughs> or you could go to another country, except you'd have trouble getting in anywhere without a passport. Well, maybe you could stay at the Shaw's place. <laughs> I don't think so. Huh. I think it'd be too difficult for you to adjust to another country. Huh. And you can go with me, Mind. If we go to China, it'll be Mork and Ming. <laughs> Or if we go to, if we go to Siberia, it'll be Mork and or, or Italy, it'll be Mork and Or if we go to Latvia, it'll be Laverne and Shirley. No, no, it won't work. You, you can't go. Well, why not? Well, because I don't want to take away from your friends, your life here, your dentist. I've got another solution. I'll disguise myself as an American tourist. I'll, I'll get a Nikon camera. I'll get a long, two-piece leisure suit. That's okay. We'll run some kids. We'll put them in the back. They'll wear a little Mickey Mouse face and go, Dad, are we going to Disneyland? <laughs> well, I'll be driving on, looking at the rear mirror and go, Bill Bob, Joe, Gene, Carl, Joe, down, you shut up, and if, if Grandpa passes out again, you jumpstart him. Now, come on, let me cry. Well, Mark, the only thing left to do is what the judge suggested, getting married. Oh, I couldn't do that, Min. Well, why not? Well, because you once said that marriage is a very, very special thing and you only want to do it once, and I don't want you to waste it on doing a favor for a friend. Yeah, but, Mork, I'm trying to help you. No, it'll be all right. I'll leave, and you'll forget about me, and I'll forget about you in about 200 years. Oh. Well, we can't give up now. I mean, we've got five whole days to think of something. No. Let's face it, I'm doomed. Oh. At least I have something to remember you by. Can I see? Well, don't open it. What is it? Well, inside's the very first tear you ever shed for me. Oh, and you carry this with you? Oh, Mark, that's so nice. Oh, I hope one day I can... If I ever get real, real lonely, I'll open it up and brush that tear away and almost be like having you there. Oh, oh it's probably the library, Mend. I'm overdoing that book, Raising Weasels for Fun and Profit. <laughs> Well, he sure is. We'll keep a visitor. Oh, rug bug. You probably came to say goodbye, didn't you? It's not why I'm here. I saw this program on TV and I thought it might help you. It's about adopting kids from Asia. If you could find someone to adopt you, like the Vietnamese kids, you could stay in this country. That's a great idea. Yeah, man, but I'm allergic to silk and I don't love rice. It's not so bad if you put lots of sugar on it. <laughs> See ya. Okay, thanks a lot, Judd. Sure thing. Okay, bye. 
Did you hear that? All we have to do is find an American who will adopt you, and then you can stay in the country. Yeah, but who's going to adopt me? Me? Adoption agency. Adoption agency. Uh, Min, can you stop your fingers from walking for a second and let my lips do the talking? <laughs> Min, I don't think it's a very good idea. Why, Mork? I'll adopt you and then everything will be... And then you become my mother. Right. Well, you see, I already have a mother back on Ork. I mean, if, and if you adopt me, it'll break a little Pyrex heart. All right, then we'll have to find someone else who will adopt you. Hi, kids. Mr. Bickley. Thank you for remembering. Mind if I borrow a cup of sweet and low? Oh, Mr. Bickley, why don't you come in and sit down? We have something we'd like to talk to you about. Sure. Why shouldn't I share the wisdom of my years? Vic, I'm just wondering, what's your opinion about adoption? I'm for it. It gives a guy an excuse to watch the Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> We feel that a new son could really bring joy into one's life. Oh, I get it now. You're thinking about adopting a little boy. I think it's nice. You get the kid of your choice, and the child gets parents who love him and want him. Everybody wins. Oh, see, Mr. Bickley... However, before you do anything, <laughs> let Uncle Bick give you a little advice. If possible, find out everything you can about his background, who his parents were, where he came from, and if he's had his shots. <laughs> Do you want to ask these questions if you're adopting someone? I'd want to ask those questions if I was hiring a gardener. Well, thanks for the advice. Oh, sorry, we're out of sweet and low. Oh, well, you might as well hold on to this till you get some. It's yours. I borrowed it last year. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you do get a kid and you need a babysitter, just drop him by my place. You can use that window over there. <laughs> Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye, Mindy. <laughs> Bye, America. Well, I'm sorry. That's all right, men. I would probably be too big for his lap anyway. <laughs> what we have to find is someone who'll adopt you that won't ask any questions about your past. Well, I just hope it's not Roy Rogers. Because if I pass on, he'll have me stuffed and put me in his museum. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, me too. Where's the little one? You're looking at him. You're here to be adopted? Oh, the, the bigger ones are always the last to go. <laughs> you mean you're adopting him? Oh, no, no, not me. Would you put that thing away? They're a lady's present. Son! Is that you? Dad! Walk it! Here's the present I got you. You left it in the other office. Careful, it's still got its claws. Well, you're the best dad in the whole world. Uh, yes. I think I'll just take this for now. Exodor, we really can't thank you enough for doing this. I'd do anything for this wife. <laughs> Even dress up in this ridiculous outfit. Now, Exidor, Mork has passed every other interview. Now, this one's the big one. Now, do you remember what you're supposed to do? Certainly. I'm to be dignified, respectful, and just as crazy as the rest of the people in this world. What, do you think you can do that? Oh, sure. I'm great at impressions. Uh, watch this. <laughs> Hello. Lovely day. Yeah. Charming child. Why, thank you. Madcap enough? <laughs> Morris, don't chew on that lady's skirt. Lucky for you, polyester doesn't fray. Oh, Mark, I think we're in trouble. Mr. Exidor. That's you. Good luck. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Exidor, now don't talk too much and just try and play it cool, all right? Cool as a night in Siberia. 
Three minutes. Wash that before you put it in your mouth. <laughs> oh, lovely day, isn't it? Uh, yes. Now, who is adopting who? <coughs> I'm Mr. Moore. This is my father-to-be, Mr. Exidor. I see. I have the papers here of your interviews today, but essentially, the question of adoption rests on this meeting. Mr. Exidor, do you have your references with you? <laughs> they're in the briefcase. Oh, they're in the briefcase. <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> It says here that you're a doctor of philosophy, Mr. Dr. Exidor, and that you've studied with Spinoza. He's been dead for many years. No wonder I never got my report card. Um, he means Mel Spinoza. It's his friend from Harvard. <laughs> it's just a little joke. Uh, this is not a place for levity. Doctor, it could cost you a son. Of course. Dr. Exidor, the key question is, why do you want to adopt someone as old as Mork? Why? My dear lady, where is it written that a person is not entitled to love after a certain age? What you see before you are two people with complementary needs. He to have a father, I to be one. What calloused heart would deny the fulfillment of this just because one of us isn't wearing diapers. You really do love each other, don't you? Oh. <laughs> she bought it. <laughs> Dr. Exidor, I had my doubts, but you're a fine man. You have a son. Junior. Oh, Chef. <laughs> Take these papers to be notarized and bring them back here. Your wish is my command. <laughs> we did it. Exodore, you were brilliant. If we could bag what I just said over there, we could double the corn crop in Kansas. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Be careful with those papers. Those are the only ones we have. Don't worry. <laughs> Happy! Don't throw that frisbee in here! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Just trying to be a chip off the old pop. <laughs> you know, Rex, I mean, Dad's been awfully nice to me. I mean, he even put me in his will before he was going to leave everything to his burrow. <laughs> All right. And what are you going to inherit? A uh, bale of hay. <laughs> well, he was going to leave me the Colorado River, but I said I had no place to put it. <laughs> you know, Mark, uh, we solved one problem, but I'm afraid we might have another one. I've been thinking, and for the first time, the government actually has records on you. I don't think so, man. You see, the Immigration Department closed its files on me. And Dad didn't trust the Adoption Bureau with him because they're such important papers, he said he put him in his private vault. Exodor has a vault? Yeah, it's behind Herman's house of fish at a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you're safe for a while anyway. You know, Min, we got real close to being married, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I wonder what that would have been like. Mr. and Mrs. Mork. <laughs> yeah, let's see. You know... After a while, I'd, I'd come home, open the door, and go, uh, Hi, Mindy. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ray. <laughs> wow. Hi, Dad. Wow, you look really good tonight. It's really nice to have you home. <laughs> then I'd, I'd sit in front of the, of the TV on Sundays with a six-pack of ginger ale, and I'd sit there for a long time, and eventually, after a couple of years, I'd get a little ginger belly. <laughs> then I'd have to buy lots of aspirin for all the headaches you get at night. <laughs> But eventually we get older and a lot older and we sit out on the front porch in our little motorized rocking chairs and the chairs that rock for us. 
Every so often I flip my little face, make it real fast like that, and turn it down. <laughs> and then finally, one day, I'd lean over to you, take me about an hour to get real close. <laughs> and then I'd lean over and whisper in your hearing aid. I'd say, Mindy, after all these years, you've been so nice to me. I'm going to tell you something that no one else knows. I'm really a... More calling Orson. Come in, Orson. More calling Orson. Come in, Orson. Mork calling Austin. Come in, your good year, ship. I'm here, Mork. What do you have to report? Well, I had a close call, your high and wideness. I was almost banned from the country. Well, if you couldn't stay there, why didn't you move to another country? Oh, easier said than done, sir. You see, the borders are guarded by an incredible obstacle known as red tape. Besides, I'm a good accustomed to this place and, and to Mindy's face. But are you welcome to remain there? Well, sir, all I know is there's this lady who's carrying a torch to me who keeps saying, Send me, you're tired, you're poor, and you're huddled masses. A noble sentiment. Yes, sir. Except there's also a man down at the immigration office who says, Not too tired, not too poor, and not too many, huh? How did you convince them to let you stay? Well, I had to be adopted. You see, adoption is an earth custom that allows humans who like being parents to find others who need them. It's kind of like an emotional swap meet. Do the earthlings get a reward for adopting? Well, all I know, sir, is their lives are richer for having done it. You see, that's how this country was founded, by adopting people from other nations. First, a few Vikings. Then, some Spaniards. Then, some Englishmen. Then, some Africans. Some Orientals. Some Irish. Then, some Eastern Europeans. And before you know it, Orson, good Griffith, you got the birth of a nation. Until next week, sir. No, 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 no. Us, hmm? Wash day. <laughs>